Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show. Obviously, there is a lot of news that broke uh, this week and some that broke uh, last night. As a matter of fact, we found out that Mitch McConnell was stepping down from uh, as, as GOP leader in the Senate. Uh, and quite frankly, that didn't come soon enough, in my opinion. The Supreme Court has decided that they will hear Trump's presidential immunity claim. And the left is going absolutely uh, batty. Hunter Biden testifies that his father was not involved in uh, in his business behind closed doors. But also, we're going to be joined by George Stephan- uh, uh, George Papadopoulos. I'm sorry. George Papadopoulos was a Trump campaign advisor, and he was spied upon uh, by our own intelligence communities, by the CIA. Uh, and we now know that it was the CIA that rushed the that launched the Russia collusion hoax. We'll be talking about that and more on The Carl Jackson Show. All right, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show. We've got a bang up show for you today. I'm going to start off uh, with a guest that has become famous, but probably not in the way that he wanted to. Actually, I know it's not in the way that he wanted to, but I want to talk about this because this narrative of, of this Russia collusion hoax is resurfacing amongst the Democrat Party as we head in. Uh, to the November election cycle, and it appears, actually, it's it, it's pretty much a a, a given that Trump is going to be the nominee. And all of a sudden, this Russia collusion hoax comes up again. Well, today, I'm joined by my guest, George uh, 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 Papadopoulos. Uh, and, and you might remember, you might remember him uh, because he was railroaded by our own federal government, and he's here to talk about it and issue some warnings for those of you that are out there in the listening audience. George, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show. Thanks for having me, Carl. George, I got to ask you, man, just from uh, from a personal level, I I, I got to tell you, I was I used to be a ghetto fabulous person, man. I got in trouble with the law when I was younger, uh, and uh, you know it was a scary situation. But I'm talking about local crime. I was a complete idiot before God radically changed my life. Uh, but you, you were an innocent civilian working on the Trump campaign, and all of a sudden the federal government comes after you. Talk to us about that, just if you would, just 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 remind the audience of your story. Yeah, so um, I wrote a book on this um, for everybody who really wants the minutia and the really intimate details because it's it's really a very complicated story. So I'm going to try and summarize. Uh, the situation. Um, so I worked in D.C. Uh, after grad school uh, with a really establishment type group called the Hudson Institute. This was way before MAGA even existed. This is before America First. And that was really the only Republican show in town. So when uh, Bush, George W. left office, a lot of his associates, advisors, top officials, they joined this organization. I ended up working for them for five years during the Obama administration. Uh, on like very interesting, sensitive projects, energy security stuff, foreign policy things that the Obama administration really didn't like because this was a group, obviously, that was these were George W. Bush people. These were Reagan officials. So uh, you're going into the summer of 2015. And I decided to leave this group of people because I didn't think their ideology was what the future of America was about. I saw Donald Trump, Ben Carson, some others who had a new vision for America. And I decided to join uh, I actually throw my hat in the ring and start advising at the presidential campaign level to use some of that expertise. So I end up reaching out to Corey Lewandowski in the summer of 2015. I said, you have a winner here. I thought Trump was going to be the winner. Uh, basically, the moment I saw him go down those escalators, because he was talking practical sense. He was talking about issues that really affected the American security questions, the economy, the border, foreign policy, while every other candidate besides Ben Carson, who I initially advised, uh, wasn't talking about. So I ended up uh, advising Dr. Ben Carson's uh, presidential campaign first, uh, and then I joined Trump's campaign after Ben Carson endorsed him. So um, the short story is that background uh, put a target on me, and that target didn't come from some spontaneous FBI investigation like the fake ma- narrative was all about. Just last week or two weeks ago, there was a bombshell story that came out that said, that the CIA actually directed this operation against people affiliated with Trump and even Ben Carson himself. So this is a very, I guess, short summary of what we lived through uh, the last uh, six years or so and something that's really impacted three elections now. 
Yeah, and I, and I want to get to that bombshell, that report that came out that it was the CIA that started the Russia collusion hoax. And again, I'm speaking with my guest, George Papadopoulos. You can find him on, I'm always tempted to say Twitter, but it is now X. Uh, that is at George Papa 19. And again, George, what is the name of your book uh, so that people can go out and, and get that? Because I feel like it's a story that people are going to need to be familiar with heading into this election cycle as well, as this stuff is being rehashed by the Democrat Party. No, absolutely. And I mean, obviously, I'm biased because it's my book, but it's been endorsed by President Trump, by Hannah. I mean, every very important, um, you know, personality had, went back, endorsed it, loved it, because it really set the roadmap for what's been exposed now. And the book is called uh, Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crosshairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump. You can find it on Amazon. And definitely, I'm with you on Twitter. I still call it Twitter to this day. I can't get over the word X uh, <laughs> as, part of, uh, as part of these new platforms that are just emerging. But that's where I'm uh, very active on. I don't have Instagram. You know, I leave that to my wife. And uh, you can find me, you know, on X or Twitter, wherever you want to call it. George, I, I got to tell you, I remember hearing an interview with you years ago on Hannity's program uh, while you were going through this. And and I, basically, if I recall correctly, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but he encouraged you uh, to go ahead and take some type of plea deal because you just didn't know what, you, what the state was going to the deep state, if you will, was was going to do to you. Do you recall uh, do you recall that interview? And, and if, if you do, I'd really like to know on a personal level. I mean, seriously, man, what what were you going through mentally at that time on a yeah. personal level? No, no, I'm, I'm happy. You, I, I totally remember that uh, that interview with Sean. Um, Sean was, you know, a big defender of mine and uh, he became a friend after that. And look, he just like probably 99% of the world at that time before this big awakening, right? Because obviously the world has completely changed since 2016. Now you could talk about Russian space nukes and no one even blinks an eye because no one has any faith in what Congress has to say, what the intel agencies have to say. But when you look back in 2016 through 2018, there was a lot of confusion, right? A lot of propaganda, a lot of disinformation, uh, you know, who, what was Russia up to? Was Trump compromised? Was he not? Was George Papadopoulos part of a nefarious plot? Was he not? So at the end of the day, I understood that I was stuck be between a rock and a hard place. Uh, you know, it, it was a moment where, you know, I didn't have about $30 million in my bank account <laughs> to fight against uh, this government that tried to use me, General Flynn, Paul Manafort, others, to attempt a coup against the president, right? So at the end of the day, you have to make a decision. And that decision is, do you take a short-term hit to win a war, or do you fight and lose both? And I decided I was going to take a short-term hit, get the story out, and um, I wouldn't change a thing, to be honest with you, Carl. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear as well that you're out on the other side uh, in and doing well here. OK, so part of the bombshell that that dropped just a couple of weeks ago, and you guys might remember the political theater that was going on, the uh, the House was was set to basically reform or pro propose reforms to Section 702 of, 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 of FISA, the Foreign Intelligence uh, Surveillance Act, I believe. Uh, is what it is. And then all of a sudden we get this national security threat, uh, George. And, and, and it turns out it was one of our one of our own guys, if I recall, Mike, Mike Turner, uh, who, who sits on the House Intel uh, House Intel Committee. He's the chairman, as a matter of fact. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got this national security threat, uh, you know, some crazy space warfare type stuff, if I recall correctly. And all of a sudden this proposal is is pulled. It was absolutely astonishing to me, George, and I want to get your reaction to that. But one of the things we learned at that same time, that it was the CIA that spied on yourself and 25 other Trump campaign officials. Yeah, look, um, when I when I said initially that this story has um, impacted this election as well as 2016 and 2020, let me explain what I'm talking about, right? 2016, of course, it was a subtle effort, a covert effort to, to do a coup against Trump using the intel agencies. They weren't held accountable in 2016. So what did they do in 2020? The CIA, once again, with 51 intelligence as, a, agents, uh, went public and said that the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian dis disinformation. Do you remember that story? Yes. That arguably tilted the election. 
uh, besides all the other shenanigans that we're not going to get into right now, that arguably tilted the election to Biden, and that had all of the fingerprints of the CIA once again. Now, in 2024, you have this bombshell story come out, and immediately when the story comes out, what happens? There's all this attempt to deflect, to distract, to bring Russia back as the boogeyman or some sort of like nefarious character at a time when they're talking about FISA reform at the domestic and global level and financing and funding this forever war with Russia, which has direct security implications for the United States of America. So uh, going back to how I mentioned how because of all this fake news, all of this propaganda that has been spewed against the American people, they don't have confidence in Congress anymore. They don't have con uh, confidence in what people like Turner are talking about, about this threat. What they care about is their civil liberties not being violated. And that's why you're starting to see calls for Congress to actually bring in these officials for further testimony and hopefully, uh, if they broke the law, to be pers uh, prosecuted uh, during the next administration. Uh, George, we only have, uh, and George is going to stay with us for another block or so here. Uh, we only have about 30 seconds left in this block here, George. Uh, let me let me ask you, because it, it, it seems to me that people are trying their best to try to uh, pretend as if Obama wasn't aware of this situation. Do you think he was? When you put together the type of coalition that they did, when you have foreign governments involved, MI6, CIA, FBI, NSA, uh, Mossad, from what uh, re, uh, reporting said, Italian intelligence, the only way possible you could put together a team like that is if it came directly from orders from the president of the United States of America, and that was President Obama. So that's what I truly believe. I think you're right. Again, I'm speaking with my guest, George Papadopoulos. Uh, make sure you check him out on X, George Papa 19. We'll be back in a few with more. Welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. And again, I'm joined by my guest, George Papadopoulos. Uh, George was a victim, if you will, of the deep state. I mean, he is, listen, he's not acting like a victim at all. He's definitely a warrior uh, and a hero in my mind because he's fighting back against the deep state. But you should understand uh, what the left did to him could happen to you. This is a man that decided to work on the Trump campaign. Uh, and as a result of it, he found himself caught up in, uh, I, I mean, just absolute craziness, like literally being spied upon by the U.S. government. Uh, and they absolutely tried to ruin uh, his life. We just recently found out, uh, as George was talking about uh, before the break, that 26 of uh, Trump's campaign officials at the time were spied on going back as early as 2015, George. Uh, so you left off talking about how you believe that Obama had to be involved. I absolutely agree with you. And given the timeline, too, I, I, I mean, 20 going all the way back to 2015, that's uh, that, that's 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 pretty unreal. Yeah, I, I really think um, it's because Obama wanted a third term, right? Obviously, he has his third term with Biden. He's running the show, I think, behind the scenes. But at that time, Clinton was going to be his third term. So why do I think all of these foreign governments got involved? First, obviously, Obama instructed them. Uh, and secondly, they had vested interests in a Obama third term or a Clinton presidency, whatever you want to call it. These were officials that had the globalist agenda on the mind. This is something, of course, that Clinton and Obama supported. You could look at Brexit, which was the big issue in 2016, and how that affected the United Kingdom's position in the European Union, what that meant for, for sovereignty at large. Then you had the NATO question. Do we want to expand NATO? Do we want conflict with Russia? Do we want to support Ukraine? And then you had the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was this globalist trade agenda that you know, right. some candidates, unfortunately, in the Republican Party are still talking about. They wish the United States was in on. Trump was against all of that. He supported Brexit. He was anti-war with Russia and he wanted the United States never to get into the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So that's why I believe these countries basically said, oh, this is a win-win. Obama hates Trump. Obama wants a third term. These interests of ours would be threatened under Trump. So let's all have a criminal conspiracy to come together and to look at various candidates, right? It's not just Trump, because Ben Carson got spied on, right? Ben Carson, when I was working for him, he was the only candidate who actually led in the polls at one point besides Trump. And it was that steady 10 to 12% of the electorate that he had and his endorsement of Trump that I believe tilted the election to Trump in 2016. Because at that time, Ted Cruz was breathing down Trump's neck. There was a question about the evangelical support. 
And that's why I think uh, Ben Carson found himself in the crosshairs of this other plot to spy on his campaign to make sure that he had no real chance of succeeding. Wow. And if he did succeed, let's assume he did, he probably would have had the same sure. fate as Donald Trump. So it wasn't simply that they hated Trump. It's that they wanted to make sure that anybody who presented a threat was going to be taken out. You, and and this is this is I totally agree with you here, George. Uh, and again, I'm speaking to my guest, George Papadopoulos. Make sure you check him out on X at George Papa 19. Go out and get his book, Deep State Target, how I got caught in the crosshairs of the plot to bring down uh, President Trump. And there's no uh, doubt that he did. And you're absolutely right. I'm so glad that you made that point, because I really do believe I, I know that uh, most people uh, would assume that it's it, it, it's it's just Trump. And because of Trump's policies, there's no doubt that the establishment, in my opinion, were concerned but I do believe that Obama was working on fundamentally transforming America, and he wanted Hillary Clinton in to complete that transition. So I think you're right that if Ben Carson would have been the president and Ted Cruz, for that matter, uh, I, I really think they would have tried to do a number on, quite frankly, either one of those of those guys. Uh, it, it, let me let me ask you this. You you reposted. I looked on your ex uh, page earlier. Again, you can find George Papadopoulos um, at uh, George Papa 19. And you, repo you reposted something that Representative Thomas Massey posted last summer. Uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll quote from that uh, post. Joseph Mifsud is the mystery man who started the Russia hoax. He's mentioned 89 times in the Mueller report, but strangely, not once in Durham's. Uh, Representative Matt Gates, uh, uh, Thomas Massey says, and I want to know if Mifsud, if Mifsud is associated with with the Western Intelligence Agency. What, what do you know about this guy, Mifsud? I, I've heard things in the past, like he's dead somewhere. Uh, they don't know where he is. What, what do you know about this guy today? Yeah, no, I'm so happy you brought this guy up because uh, this person is at the epicenter of the entire plot that threw our country into the whirlwind over the last uh, six years or so. And uh, he's gone missing. Now, the last time anybody heard from Joseph Mifsud was when my name went public, I think in October of 2017, uh, at a time when they, uh, you uh -huh. know, were trying to get all the Trump associates and like this, uh, for, and this con uh, that they were, you know, presenting us as like these evil people. And he said, why are you calling me a Russian asset? I, I love Hillary Clinton. And the moment he said that in the Italian newspaper, he's gone underground, he's gone hiding. And it's like a disturbing pattern that we've seen from all of these other assets, too. Whoever was caught up spying or, you know, trying to do something bad to the Trump campaign at the behest of the FBI, the CIA or whatever, they've now gone underground. So um, when you had people like Congressman Massey and Gates basically telling Durham, why are you part of a cover up? Why are you not telling the American people who this guy's handlers were? That's great and all. But now how many months after that are we? We're about eight months after that. And Congressman Gates and Congressman Massey have not held A.G. Barr or Durham to be held accountable for that. They haven't held new testimony. They haven't had new hearings, especially after the bombshell story about the CIA. And if we're going to have a majority in Congress like we do in the House, we might as well use it. And if we don't, we're going to lose it. And this is a missed opportunity that we're not getting this, these answers from um, the congressman. You, you bring up a, a, a good point, and I wanted to touch on this because I don't think anyone else is. I, listen, I expect the left to act like the left, even though when it comes to you and what they did, the spying uh, and the intel community. Uh, listen, I believe the intel communities, I, I, I think they need to be dismantled. I don't. Uh, this is just me. Call me crazy. I, I, I don't believe that you can reform some of these institutions, the CIA uh, and the FBI uh, in, in included. Um, but but but, George, I, I, I got to tell you. I'm concerned about the intel community. I, I'm concerned about the Democrat Party because I think they've, in my opinion, gone full commie. But I'm also concern, concerned about the uh, lackadaisicalness, I, I, I guess, when it comes to the, the Republican Party. Some people seem interested in this story. Others don't. I, I, have you noticed that? Are you concerned about that at all? Carl, I think the reason that you see a lot of people, even in the Republican Party, who are afraid to touch this very hot potato. Do you know why? Because one, it leads directly to Obama, or at least the upper echelons of the U.S. government. And two, it exposes a criminal conspiracy that was waged by Western intelligence 
the CIA, the British government, the Italians, the Israelis, the Australians. I'm just referring to countries that were named in this article. So this sure. is a very fact-oriented conversation we're having. And that's not really good, right? <laughs> you don't want to tell the American people that your government is basically not investigating dirt on candidates or citizens, but is planning it on people. And they're trying to put their finger on the scale of both the truth and our democratic process. Because what we're talking about here and what was revealed just weeks ago is the scandal of the century. This is the biggest political scandal that's ever hit America, at least in this century. And I don't even think people realize how big this is. Uh, you look at the church committee hearings, right? When the CIA went wrong, right. we need a new type of church committee hearing in this century to really reign in the intel agencies because the moment our government becomes an enemy of the American people, they're no longer serving our interests. And only Congress has the power to both defund them and to rein them in and to conduct proper oversight. And if they don't use that power, then we really need to think about different type of candidates to take to D.C. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, if you don't uh, use power when you're in Washington, D.C., uh, what good is it? It, it? it amazes me that people always talk about the Democrat Party and how crazy they are, including myself, and I believe they are. Uh, but I have to admit I have respect for them because, I mean, they said they wanted wanted to fundamentally transform America, and they do it. And and people, you know, by and large, accept it. I, everybody screams and hollers for a minute or two, and then everybody accepts it. It's crazy. Uh, let me ask you this. We only have a minute or so left in this block. The, the situation with Durham and Mifsud, uh, it, it, he, Mifsud was included in Mueller's report, but not in Durham's. That confuses me. I, I, I for one, maybe I'm naive. I trusted Durham. Why wouldn't he be included in in in, in Durham's report, Mifsud? Uh, that is. Do you have any idea or any speculation as to why? Durham and AG Barr. Uh, once I kind of went public with my story in 2018, 2019, I forced their hand and I said that Mifsud was operating out of Rome and London. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, because I testified under oath uh, to Congress about this stuff. So there was a, a hearing uh, that I testified to John Ratcliffe and uh, Mark Meadows about. And I said, you have to go to Rome and London to find him. A.G. Barr and Durham traveled to Rome. They traveled to London. They found out what this guy was all about. And then Durham decided to cover it up because it was too sensitive of a topic. But moving forward, now that Trump declassified all the Russiagate files, I think it's going to be impossible mm. for them to keep this uh, under uh, under seal moving forward. And that's, I think, why we're getting some of these leaks now. Hmm. All right. That makes total sense. Also makes sense why they would have raided Mar-a-Lago. Again, my guest, uh, George Papadopoulos. Check him out on X at George Papa 19. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. Again, I'm joined by my guest or with my guest, George Papadopoulos. Find him on X at George Papa 19. Uh, George, I want to read to you part of a, a, a column and I want to get your response to it. Uh, this is a column from the Federalist. Uh, John, I believe it's John Daniel Davidson, uh, if if I recall his name correctly, wrote this column. But he talks about this Section 702 controversy that we spoke of earlier in the program where you had Republic, the Republican House getting ready to propose reforms to Section 02 to stop spying. And then all of a sudden, this national security threat comes out. Uh, you have Speaker Mike Johnson uh, that uh, pulls it. Uh, he says this. What happened next is telling, even though the House Republicans who were pushing for the Pfizer reforms appeared to be winning the debate. In the aftermath of the hysteria over Russian nukes in space, Speaker Johnson pulled the bill and counseled Congress for the rest of the week. He says it doesn't take a conspiracy theorist to figure out what happened there. Our intelligence agencies don't want lawmakers getting in the way of their plans. They don't want any interruption in the flow of U.S. tax dollars to Ukraine. And they don't want any curbs on their ability to spy on Americans. Can you connect the dots for me on Ukraine and what he said? And they don't want any curbs on their ability to spy on Americans. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a firm believer that uh, this plot that was waged against us in 2016 and then obviously the 2020 election interference by the CIA and what the CIA is doing now was, and, and by the way, with another bombshell story that just came out days ago about how the CIA has been operating in Ukraine now for at least a decade with secret bases and secret spying operations. This is New York Times, okay? This isn't like some blog I'm, I'm referencing here. When you look at 
these dots, you can understand that there was one goal and only one goal in mind, and that was anybody who presented a threat to the intel agency's goal, and that was to start conflict with Russia. For whatever reason that conflict was supposed to be, they were going to be destroyed. Trump survived it, I survived it, others survived it, we're, we're on offense now. That's that's one thing. Now, Congress, as I mentioned, they're not actually doing their job, even though we have a majority in the House. So when you have issues like FISA coming up, you have issues like funding a new FBI headquarters, you have the $100 billion of foreign aid going to Taiwan, Israel, and Ukraine at a time when American taxpayers are suffering, that is a direct threat to the money of the intel agencies, their credibility, and their ability to wage point. war. And that is what the connection is between 2016, to, uh, re this recent article you just referenced about this war in uh, Ukraine and how Congress is now stuck in the middle of either giving them what they want or being accused of being Russian traitors because they're not giving our intelligence community what they want to wage this uh, cold war or hot war with Russia. So um, that's really what's at stake here. And um, unfortunately, you're going to see them continue to escalate, I believe, these distractions until they get what they want. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, listen, I I think uh, I, I hate to say it, but I don't believe we've seen anything yet when it comes to the intel community, uh, nor the Democrat Party. I, I, I hate to say it, but I feel like all of these institutions are are aligned I think uh, Obama really, uh, you know, military, CIA, FBI, I think he essentially put his people in and they're doing his bidding, uh, you know, I, I believe. And it's very, I, I mean, it's just very disconcerting. But you make a good point. I remember interviewing, I'm not sure if you're familiar with whom, uh, who Kyle uh, Serafin is or Stephen yes. Friend. Okay, yes, both both FBI whistleblowers and I, I've interviewed them both on different occasions on, and, and, and both, uh, both the interviews, both of the gentlemen said, uh, that, uh, you know, they believe that the FBI uh, should be dismantled. I think Stephen Friend said at the very least they should be uh, disarmed and forced, forced to work with local law enforcement. But they said basically after 9-11, uh, they had, uh, you know, they had a, a mission to go after the bad guys, uh, mostly Islamic terrorists, uh, rid the United States of Islamic terrorists. And they did that. And then all of a sudden they needed to find reasons to justify their positions are, are, are you saying that you believe the CIA may be doing the same thing when it comes to this Russia collusion hoax? <laughs> you know, that was I, I'm very I'm not surprised uh, that Steve uh, said that I, I actually met him uh, for the first time in person a couple months back. And what a horrifying story he went through, uh, you know, actually doing, a, you know, whistleblowing and then having yes. an entire organization come down hard on him and try to destroy his life which is something that, you know, should send shockwaves through, throughout America. So um, I believe that you're absolutely right, and he's absolutely right. When they lose a purpose, they need to justify where the billions are going to be used for, right? So what's actually happening now in the United States and abroad? The FBI under Ray and A.G. Garland are now characterizing MAGA supporters as domestic terrorists. That's yep. what they're actually doing, right? So yep. they're justifying a so-called fake homegrown threat to increase their already bloated, um, you know, surveillance powers or their coffers and their new billion-dollar facility that they want to develop. And the CIA needs a boogeyman to say they're the bad guy, right? So we live in this, you know, bipolar world. There's good and bad. There's you know, right and wrong. So the CIA is always good. Russia's bad. Iran is bad, China's bad, that's why we're creating all these conflicts. And if you don't stand and support that, then you're gonna make America fall under threat. And that's why they're trying to create these fake conflicts, why they continuously poke the Russian bear, why they're causing these issues with Iran and all this stuff right now. And it's really going to result in a very, very bad backlash, unfortunately, I think, here at home. George, has any Republican, House or Senate-wise, been in touch with you 
to say, George, listen, we believe this spying is out of control. I mean, there's been some voices that have spoken out against it on the Hill, but the voices are very few. But I am curious if any one of uh, them or anyone uh, Congress wise, House or Senate has contacted you and say, uh, George, give us your take on how we tame this beast. You know, the only time that happened was in uh, 2018 um, when I was invited by the House Oversight Committee uh, when I think it was John Ratcliffe. He then became the head of DNI and Mark Meadows when he was in Congress. He later, of course, became Trump's uh, chief of staff. And we had uh, about a five hour testimony about these issues. So I've already testified once. But now I think uh, as Congress is developing strategies of how to really curtail this massive beast of an apparatus that is consuming American civil liberties, I would actually love to go and testify once again to present some ideas, to give my personal testimony, and to explain that this isn't simply a personal story. Trust me, this is about the people. This is a, about 80 million MAGA yeah. voters. This is about the, the integrity of our elections. This is about how the intelligence community even operates. This is about your civil liberties, the Constitution. I mean, this is everything. This isn't like I'm not here talking to you and saying, hey, this is my personal story. Absolutely not. So if I went in front of Congress, I would deliver that as an American patriot who loves this country, who want to make sure that we are the last remaining beacon of freedom and that we don't turn inwards into civil conflict like it looks like is about to happen. So I guess that's a long winded answer. But the short answer is that as of currently, I haven't been reached out to by Congress. No. You know, and I and, and I got to tell you, Georgia, I think this this uh, story, this issue extends beyond uh, MAGA supporters or Trump supporters. I really want people out there in the listening audience to get imagine if it, it, you if you hate Trump, that's you know, listen, that's fine. It's a it's a free country. Well, it's somewhat of a free country, not not as much though with Biden <laughs> in, 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 in office. But imagine if if, you know, conservatives turned this intelligence community or this apparatus against your family, your, your, your friends. That's, that's not how this is supposed to work. These institutions have way too much power. Have you heard anything lately, George? We have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, uh, Speaker Mike Johnson pulled those proposals for Section 702 of FISA. Have you heard anything about that uh, as of late? No, because unfortunately, whenever there's some traction going into that type of um, strategy or you of know course. attempt to curtail, there's either a distraction uh, or there's a bad story that they do against Trump that sucks up the media waves. Or and now, of course, you have the Hunter Biden testimony this week. You have other you know uh, potential impeachment hearings. So I think that's going to be drained out with all of these news stories. But I think at the end of the day, we have to walk and chew gum at the same time. We can impeach Biden. We can hold these hearings while Amen. we reform the FBI and the CIA. And if we can't do that, then we're just up there doing nothing. Congress isn't doing their job. And we really need to start thinking about primarying some of these folks who are out there that aren't doing the will of the American people. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. There's a lot of people out there that'll say MAGA, 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 America first. And I look at their liberty scores and I'm like, not so much. I, I really wish people would realize that there's a grift to MAGA as much as there are the real people that are involved. Uh, just real quick, we only have about 40 seconds left. Just to confirm something that you said earlier, uh, uh, the Federalist writes, uh, in fact, uh, he's talking about the Five Eyes. Uh, the reports alleges U.S. intelligence agencies tasked the U.K., Canada, New Zealand and Australia, the other other members of the so-called Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance to surveil 26 Trump associates identified by President Barack Obama, CIA director John Brennan, who has his fingerprints all over this. But I just wanted to confirm that your last take here, George, 15 seconds. I'm so happy you left it off with that, because moving forward, it it, this report is absolutely devastating to U.S. foreign policy, how the U.S. conducts its foreign affairs with the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and some other allies. That's right. why this Five Eyes agreement also has to be reformed so that never happens again. We'll have to leave it there. George Papadopoulos, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, or welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. I hope you enjoyed that interview with George Papadopoulos. Um, I'm going to be sharing a little more about recent revelations that the C CIA began uh, began the Russia collusion hoax, and 
uh, and why it is being rehashed. But before I do that, I do want to bring you some other news. Uh, the Supreme Court decided this week that they would hear or they will hear Trump's immunity case relating to January 6th. And the left is absolutely freaking out about it. The Los Angeles Times reported it this way. The Supreme Court announced Wednesday that it will hear arguments and issue a decision on whether former President Trump is immune from prosecution for the January 6th mob attack on the U.S. Capitol, even if the justices ultimately rule against Trump. Their decision to intervene now will delay his trial for several months, casting doubt on whether the criminal case could go to a jury before the fall election campaign. And guys, make no mistake about it. Uh, what the what the left is engaged in is lawfare. They don't have a solid candidate in Joe Biden. Joe Biden isn't going to debate. Joe Biden isn't going to be able to campaign. Uh, earlier this week, his doctor issued a statement that said that uh, Joe Biden is full of vigor. He's in great health, so on, et cetera. But he didn't take a cognitive test. Why would the president of the United States refuse to take a cognitive test? And that it, it, the answer is simple. We all know the answer. It's because Joe Biden is not completely there. Uh, Robert Hur's report, special counsel Robert Hur's report, let us know, uh, let all of us know just that. Uh, and so that is what the left is afraid of. We also found out in the news that Senator Mitch McConnell is stepping down from his leadership role uh, in the Senate. As a matter of fact, he will be retiring. He will not be leaving office until November. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of work done between now and then, both in the House and the Senate leading up to the 2024 uh, election. Uh, so that is interesting news. Uh, right now, some of the names uh, are John Cornyn, uh, John Thune, uh, John Barrasso, amongst others, all of which are more of the establishment, uh, establishment wing of the Republican Party. So we'll have to wait and see if there's a fight that ensues within the Republican Senate Republican chamber that can uh, that can bring in some fresh blood, whether there's other names such as uh, Rick Scott, Ted Cruz, J.D. Vance or some of the names that I've heard. Uh, God willing, one of them will prevail. We really do need an opposition party in Washington, D.C. We need opposition leadership in Washington, D.C. And for the most part, at least in the Senate, we don't have that right now under Senator Mitch McConnell. Uh, so that is news. Hunter Biden testified earlier this week that his father was not involved uh, in his business, despite the fact that there were a couple of checks sent to uh, Joe Biden uh, or actually sent to his brother that were paid out the very same day in the exact same amount of cash that his brother got. We all know that Joe Biden's brother, nor Hunter Biden, who was addicted to crack and addicted to prostitutes, wouldn't be multimillionaires were it not for their brother's influence, both while he was a senator, also while he was vice president of the United States of America. We've had other witnesses that have testified Hunter Biden's business partners, uh, Devin Archer, Tony Bobolinsky. Tony Bobolinsky testified that he, when he was working with Biden's, uh, uh, with the Bidens, Joe Biden was the big guy. He was the brand. Devin Archer testified to the same. Uh, so that we we know that these people are corrupt as all get out. Uh, but what the left is trying to do again, the only way that they can win the election in 2024, it's going to be based upon lawfare and it's going to be based upon attacking former President Donald Trump as hard and as often as they can. I don't suspect that they will let up at all on any type of lawfare. Sadly, the media is in cahoots with them. And we also know, based upon the interview uh, with George Papadopoulos, as well as reporting from uh, Matt Taibbi, Michael Schellenberger, and others, uh, that the intel community uh, were involved in the Russia collusion hoax. Also, um, in more lawfare news this week, an Illinois judge has ruled that Trump is disqualified from the ballot in Illinois. Uh, so here's what the left is trying to do. Again, this is lawfare. Right now, President Trump has spent just as much in these court battles as he has buying television ads. All right. This is absolutely insane. And that's what the left wants to do. If he's going to use his money, he's not going to be able to use his money for a ground game. He's going to have to use his money defending himself in court. All of these things are connected. That's what is so important to understand. Every single one of these stories are absolutely connected. Uh, I've got some border uh, news for you as well. Uh, this was very, uh, very, very interesting. Um, 
this is from Venezuela's homicide rate drops uh, because a lot of the criminals are coming to the United States of America. And we've witnessed that this week, haven't we? We've had some uh, murders. Uh, obviously, uh, Lakin Riley comes to mind. I mean, we've had some really sad stories this week by illegal aliens that have committed some horrendous crimes right here in the United States of America. And I do predict, sadly so, that that is going to get worse. All right. Now, let me get back to this story with George Papadopoulos. Guys, because all of this stuff is interconnected. All right. They're all connected. They all work together. George Papadopoulos, as you heard him here, uh, laid out the case how the intelligence community was involved with colluding and conspiring uh, to build this or create this Russia collusion hoax narrative. They worked in tandem with former Secretary of State, uh, then candidate as well for President Hillary Clinton uh, to form this narrative. The intel community, the intelligence community, you know, the intelligence community that's supposed to be working for all of Americans and our best interest and in keeping us safe. Well, they've turned against their fellow, uh, their fellow Americans, especially fellow Americans that happen to be conservative or Republican leaning or MAGA leaning, if you will. I mean, we live in such scary times and there might be some of you in the audience that says, well, listen, Trump gets what he deserves. But we know that this is a hoax. We know now the now the Democrat Party are trying to rehash this narrative that if Trump does win because the polls are looking good for him. Now, listen, again, I believe that lawfare and probably ballots are going to settle uh, 2024, not your regular everyday voting. Uh, but that just means that more of us have to show up at the polls. We have to make sure uh, that we defeat the left so so big, or there's so many vote, uh, so many of us voting uh, that it's going to be difficult for them to cheat. But they are going to try to cheat. It's all that they have. So now they're rehashing this Russia collusion narrative. Let me just give you a slight history. Some of the journalists that were reporting for what were called the Twitter files. It's uh, obviously now called X after Elon Musk. But Matt Taibbi is one of them. Uh, he is one of the journalists known for the uh, Twitter files and his work chronicling the Occupy Wall Street protests. Um, and he claimed in a, a substack recently that he was privy to evidence of an Obama era political espionage, quote unquote, campaign, not unlike the one it's purported uh, it's purported target Donald Trump long suspected. So Donald Trump being the target, he writes, Taibbi says, Again, he published this uh, report with fellow uh, X-Files journalist or Twitter files journalist Michael Schellenberger and reporter Alex Gutentag. Uh, he further told Fox News in a recent interview with Jesse Waters uh, that the narrative of Trump-Russia collusion had the same hallmarks of the Bush-era Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. Wherever you fall on that, I want you to understand that Matt Taibbi is a liberal, but Matt Taibbi is more of a... He's he's an old school liberal, right? He still loves America. He still believes in America. He has some views that are more liberal than you and I. I wouldn't necessarily say he's a classical liberal, uh, but more just an old school Democrat liberal that didn't hate the right per se, didn't like some of our ideas, I, our ideas, and he was willing to uh, fight for his ideas at the ballot box. So he's just a good, solid reporter. But here's what he found. Obama and former CIA director John Brennan, yes, you heard me right, Obama, asked English-speaking U.S. allies, known as the Five Eyes, to target the Trump campaign in 2016. And that foreign intelligence services were offered, uh, were offered a list of 26 Trump campaign figures who could be bumped, quote-unquote, or encountered by intelligence assets. One of those was George Papadopoulos. Again, a former campaign staffer who later had to plead guilty to lying to federal investigators amid a probe in which he was approached while abroad by operatives who offered dirt on Democratic challenger Hillary Clinton. Now, understand that dirt is opposition research. It's what all campaigns do. I don't care if it's state. I don't care if it's local. It's what you do. You want to get the upper hand on your opponent. There's nothing criminal about that. But if there's dirt that you can get on them, uh, and if there's dirt that they can get on you, that is what's going to happen. Now, some of you are saying, well, George Papadopoulos is a liar. I mean, obviously, guys, listen to me. When the FBI comes and investigates you and asks you questions, by the way, if they do that, do not answer anything without an attorney being present. Uh, present. Do not ever, ever, ever do that with the FBI. 
Don't ever do it. Uh, and George Papadopoulos had to learn the hard way, but you don't ever do it. Because if you misremember something, it's counted as a lie with the FBI. But guys, our intelligence communities are in cahoots with the Democrat Party to try and win 2024 just because they're just as corrupt, many of them, as our current president is. It brings me no joy to say that, but that is absolutely true. You have intelligence communities that literally broke election and spying laws. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, do not grow weary doing good. God bless. <music>